Welcome back everybody. We want to take a further look at the correct format or formulation, the way in which names are written. So, Corbus, if you could perhaps give us an indication of how you would write your name or how you feel names need to be written to be correctly addressed to the person, to the individual. Great, we'll discuss the name correctly. Um, first of all, if you, anybody would want to do a live life claim, the wording on that claim has got to be in the correct way and in the correct structure, in correct language. Uh, now, what I'm discussing is not necessarily the use of the English language or a grammar lesson or a lesson in quantum language because English is not my language and I'm not a quantum expert. We will be giving our details of quantum experts at some point in time, which people are welcome to follow and learn more about quantum. It's, it's a bitch of a language to master. Uh, the people that are really good at it spend around 2,000 hours to learn exactly how quantum works and what it's all about and how to do contracts and, and use quantum correctly. It's not somebody that, or something that anybody can just do out of the blue and say, oh, you know, it's a new language like Spanish or, or Latin or, or whatever. No, quantum is, 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 is a tough one. But once you've done that, you'll be able to write contracts and to use words and to use paper and documents in a way that nobody will trespass on what you create on your documents. And the most interesting aspect in all of it is a funny thing called a colon. And uh, this is what the colon looks like. It's a full colon, meaning that the two dots are not just one, it's not a semicolon, and it's just two little dots on a piece of paper. Now what these two little dots mean is they separate things and they make things factual. Now it means that anything that is written before and after the colon is separated or becomes a fact. And people say, yeah, but how can it be that important? You know, how can somebody put something behind a colon and make the, how does that make it a fact? Now, when we look at a, 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 a watch or a time, the way that time is written, you'll see that the hours and the seconds are separated by a colon. Yes. Now, why would that be? That makes the second a fact. And because they change all the time, it keeps them a fact as they change. So that would be the hour and those would be the seconds and it's the correct way in which time is portrayed globally, internationally, in any language, in any number that is basically the, the format for time. So anything after a colon becomes a fact. Now when it comes to our names and the way we write our names on a live life claim if you would have a normal name, just not that I think John is normal, but just to use any name uh, John would normally print his name like this. Now, writing a name like this in print would also be the same wording that John would use when he uses his autograph. Now, printing and cursive writing is different. Cursive writing is fluent writing where the letters are being joined together continuously, as in current or flowing, which is maritime, which is cursive, and cursive means it's cursed. So, John wouldn't like to write his name anymore after he's done his live life claim by using cursive writing, he would be printing his name like this. But this is not correct. Now, should John have a second name or a middle name, apart from his Christian name, he would be writing it like this. Should his second name or middle name be Michael, he would be writing John and then a hyphen in between. And then Michael will be written in lowercase. All in lowercase? Yes. Whereas the John, as I can see what you're holding up to the camera, we see capital J at the beginning of the name John. Yes. Hyphen, Michael, all lowercase. Because a second name is not a name. It's a second name. It's part of a name, but it's not a name. It's a middle name. Therefore, you cannot write the other names apart from your Christian name with a cap starting with a capital letter. That is incorrect. Because which one that won't actually be the first of the two? So this this joins the two words together by putting the hyphen in between. Okay. So this would be John Michael, if, if this is John's name. Now, I'll leave the surname off, because nobody's got a surname. There is no such thing as a surname. There is a place name where you came from, or the house that you were born into, or the family that you came from, should you want to use that. But a surname in commerce represents the debtor in the trust account. And on your birth certificate, where the portion comes in where your name is written in, there's no surname written in there that's connected to your name. Somebody else connected that surname to your name, it was not you. And that is the entrapment through the birth certificate fraud. 
is to link the surname to the given name and make it as if we do have a thing attached to our name. You do not have a thing attached to your name because it's only your name. Surname is something that's got nothing to do with you. Your, your parents might have had a surname, or your father actually had a surname, but your, you, you do not have a surname. A surname is something that you accepted by contract or by deception and you started to use it, but there is no surname that can be attached to a name other than through your own doing. And again, it comes back to the age, age old thing of consent. And until you don't know about this, obviously you'll just go along with it. Oh, yes, surname, because it asks you on the form, what's your surname? Well, you just take that form and you change that surname and you just scratch it off or you leave it out. Because there's no law in the universe that says that you must have a name. Or there's no law in the universe that says you must have a surname. So how come they ask us to do that? Because that is where we consent and we give away the information. And then basically that becomes contractual because we're putting that into a form. But yeah, the surname, the sooner you get rid of the surname and stop using the surname, the sooner you're going to get out of commerce and back into being a creditor in your life. The surname is the debtor in all situations. And in your experience, it would be rare for anyone to address you correctly. For example, when correspondence arrives into your letterbox at your home address, have you ever experienced somebody correctly formulating your name in print? Yes, I have, but from friends and from people that have studied this with me and from people that have got live life claims. Because I don't let anybody into my life that doesn't have a live life claim. Because anybody not having a live life claim is contracted to the world of the dead. They're living entities, but they haven't claimed their lives as being alive. Because in the corporate industry, we are all treated as born still and born dead and our death certificates are created for us when we were born and they are treating us with no soul whatsoever, with no life whatsoever, which is why a living man cannot be in a court. It's impossible for a living entity to be in a court. You have to be there as a corporation or representing a corpse or a corporation. And that's that. So, And this this study or this learning is derived from quantum? Yes, it's predominantly quantum and also uh, just from anybody that's got a bit of background, uh, what I would say maybe in the Masonic industry or in the occult, that there's certain procedures in courts and there's certain methodologies of how to write, but they didn't teach us this stuff in school. So is this, is this research derived from quantum researchers or are quantum researchers exposing a Masonic system? Yes, absolutely. Quantum research is actually the, the, uh, the best language that any contract should be written into. And I believe on a very high level quantum has always been there and always been used. And this comes back in old writings and old text on buildings and things. You'll see stuff written in quantum. Quantum is also almost the language of maritime which makes it interesting as well, because maritime has been this since, the, you know, people talk about the ancient mariner. There's been vessels uh, always. Earth is a vessel in space. A piece of paper is a vessel in space. Uh, the sun is a vessel in space, you know. Everything in, is actually taking place in maritime all the time as vessels moving around or standing still, but basically it's all maritime. And quantum regulates all of that, but in the correct way which makes it interesting. So if John would be writing his name just as John, that is incorrect because it doesn't mean that his name is a fact. So by putting a full colon or a colon in front of the word John, John becomes a fact. So the colon in sentence structure means for John or for the John. But the interesting thing is John hasn't closed his name. There's no period or full stop no, at the end. No, it's completely open. So if this is on a form that John has filled in, I can go and I can put all sorts of stupid stuff and write it in behind his name or use his name because there's no closure. So John should close his name and then he should put in behind his name a little full stop. To create yeah. or bring closure. Absolutely. Now John has closed his name and he's used his name correctly. So this can only mean for John, period, not James or Cindy or anybody else.
This means for John, period. Now anything that comes after this will be in sentence structure for John and nothing then after that sentence can be for again. It has to be from or about. And that's the way that the name was written. So let, we'll go to the second part behind the John. If John would have a middle name and we'd use it like that. Papers sometimes stick together for some reason. This would be John's middle name, John Michael, hyphenated like this. Capital J for John, lowercase n for like Michael. Like said before. Yes. And if John would add his surname, it would be written like this. A colon at the beginning, a colon after Michael, yes. and the two capital J's for Correct. John and for the surname, family name Jones. Absolutely. So this means for the John Michael of the house of Jones. Full stop, period. And that's that. This is the correct way.